I think it's a great story. It's great music, and not everybody knows, you know, sort of the drama behind the scenes. And it's one of those classic instances. And yet, in this in this case, you're also celebrating um, a, an individual, Robbie, and a group, a collective that broke new ground. And they did it. They really did it that way, their way. And you know, that's to be celebrated. Plus, the music is astounding. How does it feel to be here at an opening film here at TIFF? Yeah, it's so ex it's thrilling. It's so exciting. Yeah. Look, we love the city of Toronto to begin with. I mean, we've both made movies, movies here, yeah. movies here, and uh, the city has always been incredibly cooperative. We've gotten great teams of people to work on movies with us here, of course, and uh, just to be here feels good. We like. And it's become one of the epicenters. I mean, it's one of this is one of the most important festivals in the in the world. And so to be an opening night, yeah. you know, at this festival, and it's thrilling because I don't think we even appreciated quite how much it means to Robbie. Yeah. To be here tonight with his story and his film and. His what, what do you think makes music documentary so compelling at the moment? Because you've made quite a few now together. You directed. You produced. What do you think it is? Well, I think people like the right music is a unifier. It has a is a glow has a. It is a global unifier. I mean, that's what's kind of fascinating about music is that there's so many languages spoken in the world, but if you have the right melody, everyone gets it. It's the shortest way to communicate with anyone on the planet is, is connecting to a song. And these guys have created universal music. But telling yourself when you were younger, what would you tell that person now having stood standing here today? Going back in time and telling my 15-year-old self that I'd be working on a film that's executive produced by Martin Scorsese, I would have fainted. It's unbelievable. How can you metabolize that? It's like it's beyond my wildest dreams. And in 10 years time, where would you like to be having done this? What, what is the ultimate for you just, going forward? I, I just love the work. I just love making films. I love making documentaries. We're, we're just telling great stories. I just want to be able to keep doing it. You know, a platform like this, this opportunity is very much a means to an end. And, and the end is just being able to continue making the films that I love and being inspired by my work. You know what? It is this combination of music you've heard, you love. And the band itself is a little bit of an enigma. Not everybody knows kind of that much about them. They didn't quite become that sort of poppy, iconic, you know, sort of set of personalities. And a lot of that turns out to be because of the drama that they went through. Right. So this story actually sheds a lot of light on who they really were, what made them tick, what made them great. Uh, and 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 the drama that that uh, that they had to you know, the live soul, through. Yeah, and the soul of the brotherhood has a universal has universal thematics to it, and we're always attracted to brother movies movies that involve brotherhood where you're rooting for that. It's a very noble journey, mm -hmm. and so the and the band kind of led by Robbie because look he's sadly the, really the last survivor um, and a national treasure, and he. You just have to go with him, you know, you have to, he's a magnetizing character. <laughs> Let's talk about this brotherhood, because you guys have produced so many films together, worked together sometimes. Let's talk about this brotherhood and right. why does this collaboration always work? What's so special about your relationship together? Well, we've only, first of all, we've succeeded a lot. So success, <laughs> that's a good right. success breeds, you know, a kind of like bond. Hang, hanging in the game. Uh, but, but uh, it's also that there's an odd thing that's, that's, that's very powerful. We come at the world, we see it all a little bit differently, and yet when we arrive at the same conclusion, which we often do, mm -hmm. it, 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 that seems to really work on behalf, on behalf of the audiences. They, right. they, and, and, and so we trust that connection right. and look for it. Look for those bridges when we're both seeing you know, the same project. Yeah. In, in and we're, kind of, we're independently and collectively very competitive guys. Ah. Like, <laughs> I learned it, and then we'll go. When we made the movie A Splash, there was a ping pong table there, and I thought I was really good. And I said, he goes, let's play. And we played, and but he's very kind of cool, relaxed -y guy. He was like, I think you won. I'm sure you won. <laughs> <laughs> we had one, Hey Baba Lou and someone like you. So you obviously a music legend. How has the music industry changed for you over the years? Oh, I don't even understand it now. It's too fast for me. <laughs> Good idea. I'll go first because Daniel's, this is Daniel's film. Uh, thank you very much, Cameron, Joanne, for choosing our film to kick off the uh, Toronto Film Festival. You had a lot of great films to choose from. This is an enormous honor for, for Daniel and I and for everyone who's worked on this film. Thanks also for 
On behalf of everyone at White Pine Pictures, Steve, Stephen, Alicia, all our dedicated team up there, I can't see you, but I know you're there. Um, this is the 40th anniversary of my little company, so this is pretty cool. Um, thank you very much. And also on behalf of our wonderful creative production partners, first and foremost, foremost, Bell Media Studios, the great Randy Lennox, the first person who supported this film. Thank you, Randy. We're, I don't know where you're sitting. Crave is a content leader and not just a buyer of films. Thanks also to Michael Levine, psychiatrist of law, uh, who pitched this young man, Daniel, to, to direct our film. Uh, not to be confused with Jared Levine, who's Robbie Robertson's manager, who's managed everything between us so well. Hi, everybody. You got tickets. Welcome. <laughs> this all started for me about uh, two years ago. I went down to LA to meet with Robbie at his studio, and uh, we had a conversation that went really, really well. I was really excited, and uh, at the end of it, he goes, okay, kid, let's make trouble together. All right. I am on this stage uh, representing a phenomenal team whose belief in my vision uh, empowered me from day one. Peter Raymond, Steve Ord, Stephen Paniccia from White Pine Pictures, thank you. To my man, Jeffrey Remedios, Dave Harris, and the entire Shed Creative Agency and Universal Music family, thank you for your unflinching support. Sam Sutherland and Lana Balmaro, my producers and sometimes therapists, thank you for all the pep talks. To the entire Bell Media family, and especially the team at Crave, thank you for supporting projects like mine. If you don't all have subscriptions to Crave, you should go out and get one this evening. It's very important. <laughs> Randy Lennox, the great Commander-in-Chief, thank you for your friendship and for continuing to champion young Canadian talent. Ron Howard, Brian Grazier, and Michael Rosenberg from Imagine Entertainment, we would not be here without you. Sarah Bernstein, Meredith Coffers, and Justin Wilkes, thank you for your guidance. Martin Scorsese, thanks for giving me a second shot. If someone told a 15-year-old me that uh, one day I'd be working on a film with Martin Scorsese, I probably would have fainted. To the unsung heroes of this evening, my own brotherhood, my own band, Charlie Schechter, Shane McGreal, Kyle Carey Matamo, Eamon O'Connor, Alex Schuper, Phil Wilson, Adam Stewart, and Matthew Chalmers. Thanks for putting up with me. We, we might not have been uh, the obvious guys for the job, but uh, as it turns out, we were the right guys for the job, so thank you all. And I want to offer a special thank you to Andre Kutu, our incredible post-producer, who really saved the day and carried us over the finish line, so thank you, Andre. I want to thank Alicia Giamaria, Giamaria for her patience, Janet Zuccarini for your generosity and spirit, Jared Levine, the mastermind, Michael Levine, my great mentor, Carrie Teicher for your love, Larry Weinstein for your endless graciousness, and a special thank you to Peter O'Brien and Carolyn Bennett for discovering me. A few years ago, uh, I told my parents that I wanted to drop out of university and make films. Not the easiest conversation to have, but the, the next day my dad called me. He discussed it, they discussed it together, and he said, this is great, how can we help? You have to be a filmmaker. So Kevin and Joanne Rohr, my biggest champions, this is for you. I want to thank Rick Danko, Richard Manuel, Levon Helm and Garth Hudson for the music. And I want to thank Robbie Robertson for taking a chance on a kid from Toronto. Robbie, I hope this isn't too much trouble for you. Thank you all and enjoy the film. I promise you it was made with love. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! 
Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.